That concludes the items on our agenda for tonight's meeting. Council, is there a motion to adjourn this meeting? Thank you, Mr. Luna, seconded by uh, Council Member Spilsbury. Uh, we'll do a voice vote. All in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 Thank you. We are adjourned. Oh, man. This is great. Yeah, hey, I feel like we haven't seen each other in what, five minutes? Wait a minute, David. David, what is going on with you, buddy? Hmm, I think it's a filter and somebody's here helping trying to get this thing off. But really, Mayor, I'm live. I'm really not the cat. You're not, oh, you're not a cat. No, David, we know. Yes, uh, uh, get some help, David. <laughs> So are we ready yet? What do we want to watch? I've got some ideas. Ju Julie, Julie, you're on mute. Julie, mute. Down in the corner. We can't hear you. Mute. Mute. Maybe. There, there oh, you go. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. Thanks, guys. There you hey, go. Let's watch, let's watch John Wick. How about Tiger King? No, no, no. Hey, you guys, what? Trust me, what about this? Uh, I don't know, what's the rating? I vote yes. Does this happen after every meeting? Hey, let's watch the trailer first. John Wick, John Wick. We've been tested. Priorities have shifted. Everybody's stressed. Very proud of the, the way that our city responded and people's willingness to step up. We're in this together. Mesa continues to grow. Education remains a top priority. Mesa has been on the forefront of sustainability for many years. Our community is a place for everyone. This is the state of our city. Okay, all in favor of getting this watch party started, please say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. aye. okay. Normally, we would have been holding the State of the City address right here to a packed house. But as you can see, this year has been different. As we look back, I continue to be amazed by the thoughtful response of our city. And Mesa continues to face the challenges of the pandemic head on. At the start of this crisis, Mesa reached out to our residents and asked, how can we help? And with the help of the CARES Act funding, we stood up programs and services in a matter of weeks, days, and in some cases, overnight. City of Mesa staff in nearly every department shifted in response to the pandemic. Librarians became resource navigators and parks staff became experts in food box logistics. There's a quote that stuck with me through this. We're not all in the same boat. We are all in the same storm. Some of us have yachts, some have canoes, and some of us are drowning. Early on, I helped at a food distribution event at United Food Bank. 
I saw many seniors, some of them with obvious underlying health conditions, waiting in line for food. I wanted to find a way to keep those seniors safe at home and also to connect others who were suddenly finding themselves in need, at risk, and alone. To bridge the gap, we launched the Adopt a Grandparent program with For Our City Mesa. Community organizations, faith groups, and volunteers jumped in to pick up and hand deliver everything from food boxes and prescriptions to a favorite candy bar or book to read. It provides a lot of help for us, a lot. Times are hard right now. Uh, a lot of people have lost their jobs. Uh, we're actually retired, but um, you know, everybody's going through life turmoil right now. And it's just, it's been so tremendous, the, the outpouring of care, the food, which helps us along financially. It's just been such a blessing to us. I, I am so thankful, so very thankful. Programs like Adopt a Grandparent could not have happened without the incredible partnership of For Our City Mesa. United Food Bank, Mesa Chamber of Commerce, Visit Mesa, Downtown Mesa Association, Mesa United Way, and Mesa Can have also been steadfast partners. We quickly developed the Mesa Cares program and were able to deliver nearly four million meals to Mesa families, supply over 9,000 laptops to students for remote learning, support over 5,500 families with internet access to help bridge the digital divide, provide financial assistance and technical assistance to over 500 businesses, keep thousands of residents in their homes with rental assistance, utility assistance, and eviction and foreclosure prevention programs, and continue to provide public safety services from our police and fire teams. They've done a tremendous job adapting services in response to COVID-19, and from dispatchers to frontline workers, they continue to answer the call every day. I'm so proud of the men and women who serve on the Mesa Fire and Medical Department because they have truly, uh, their job Their job description for many of our areas has pivoted to a different in a different direction. We have vaccination pods, we've done several of them now, and it's, it's, it's a lot of resources. Now I have to say the police department and fire department have worked very, very well in putting these together in addition to several other city departments who have helped us along the way to really get these pods to be successful. Uh, Parks and Rex has opened up the buildings for us and made these things accessible to us to really make these pods work for the city and for the community as a whole. When you ask anybody on the fire department order mission statement is and they'll be able to tell you and that's to serve with care, compassion, accountability, respect and excellence. And our goal is to do that every day on every call and to those we serve. During this pandemic, our members have stepped up and they've followed the mission of this organization and that makes me so proud of what they do every day. We're not through with this storm yet. You have my word that Mesa will continue to respond and support our residents. With the passing of the American Rescue Plan, more support for our residents, schools, and businesses is on the way. We're in this together, and this is not the time to let up. It will take strength and resolve from all of us to see this through. I'm proud of our City of Mesa staff, first responders, frontline workers, and nonprofit agencies, and volunteers for stepping up when it mattered most. I'm grateful that I've had the opportunity to work alongside so many incredible people in this most unprecedented time. Thank you. Mesa is growing in so many wonderful ways. We see our downtown transforming into an innovation district. The gateway area is now a high-tech hub and neighborhoods in between are thriving with new investments in jobs, homes, restaurants, and shopping. As we grow, it's important we also build a city that is sustainable so our grandchildren and generations beyond can enjoy what we have today. You may not know that Mesa has been on the forefront of sustainability for many years. We don't brag about it much, but we should. Thanks to the professionals in our Environmental Management and Sustainability Department, Mesa was one of the first in the state to have a curbside recycling program. We are now a Tree City USA with a household hazardous materials facility that not only safely disposes of dangerous agents, but also reuses and upcycles. We also have a food waste to energy program, a stellar solar portfolio, and our fleet of natural gas vehicles. And that's just scratching the surface. 
We have already begun implementation of our food to energy project. The first phase, we are going to take existing biogas that is produced at the Northwest Water Reclamation Plant that is currently being flared, and we are going to treat it to pipeline quality standards and put it into our own natural gas utility. Once that gas is cleaned and in our utility, it will actually be able to power about half of the solid waste fleet. We're still evaluating the most effective way to collect and process a consistent food waste feedstock. We actually will then begin to produce what we call a bio slurry with that food waste, feed that bio slurry into the digesters, and that will double the amount of gas that's produced at the Northwest plant, which will be able to fuel almost our entire solid waste fleet. A big success of the Household Hazardous Materials Facility is our swap shop and reuse program. So almost 40% of the material that comes into this facility is then reused. And so if residents have something that's still in its original container, intact, in good condition, they're able to drop it off and then other residents are able to pick it up free of charge. The City of Mesa is unique in that we own an electric utility and we also are a very large customer, both of our own electric utility, but a large customer of Salt River Project. Our electric utility has nearly one megawatt of customer-owned solar that's been on installed over the years and we currently have four projects that are in the works that are going into downtown Mesa and lastly in our portfolio Salt River Project had what they called a sustainable energy offer in which the city of Mesa was able to contract for approximately 5.1 megawatts of utility scale solar with SRP and that was able to actually increase the total amount of retail energy that the city gets from solar to 13% of our energy comes from solar. The City of Mesa has a very robust sustainability program and this is an opportunity for us to now take it to the next level and with our operations really walk the walk and, and show our residents uh, what building a sustainable community looks like. Today I'm excited to announce a new approach to sustainability. In the past, we've taken a project-based approach where we identify opportunities that have positive impact on the environment, whether it's conserving energy or producing renewable energy, or protecting resources like water or clean air. Moving forward, we'll be developing a climate action plan that identifies our carbon footprint, sets goals to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, and most importantly, outlines steps to achieve those goals. The strategies in the plan will include energy, urban heat, air quality, water stewardship, recycling, and sustainable food systems. I'd like to see us reach carbon neutrality as an organization by 2050 and set an example for all of the businesses and residents in Mesa on how to achieve that goal while supporting business growth, economic development, and the high-tech industries and jobs of the future. I don't need to say it, but the future of Mesa looks bright, and I'm excited to make this shift in our goals because resiliency and sustainability go hand in hand. We have a responsibility to future generations to pass along a community that's healthy at every level. And now, a word from our sponsors. SRP is safeguarding Arizona's water for today and tomorrow. Through planning, innovation, and commitment, we're making sure water flows through the valley for generations to come. Learn what you can do at srpnet.com slash water. At DPR, we don't just build buildings, we build teams that think through today's challenges and deliver great results. And we want to do it better and safer than anyone else. We remain a company of builders who exist to build great things. It's the essence of who we are, and that will never change. Mesa is a diverse, welcoming, and friendly city. At every turn, and especially during the pandemic, we see the eagerness of our residents to extend a helping hand and support each other. Recently, Mesa released a strategic plan to address homelessness, from Mesa's unique community court to the Off the Streets program, and through great partnerships with community organizations, nonprofits, and faith groups, we are connecting people with pathways out of homelessness. To date, 356 people have graduated from the Off the Streets program into stable housing. 
Just over a year ago, weeks before the pandemic became an urgent health crisis, Ken Koss accepted the position of Chief of Police for the City of Mesa. The trust and legitimacy of the community is like we're nothing without it. If we don't have that, then we can't operate on a daily basis. So when the community speaks, we listen. If you don't take a genuine approach to it, and you don't adapt, and you don't grow, the trust starts to erode. The status quo is not okay. So we have to listen, we have to adapt, we have to change. We've been a progressive learning organization for a very long time, and that's just something uh, that is very important to me and my staff, and it's just the way the Mesa Police Department is built, and we will continue to be that way. I'm just proud of my people, I'm proud of my staff, I'm proud of the officers, I'm proud of our command staff. They rallied on behalf of the community, and they rallied on behalf of each other. Diversity manager Andrea Alicote is working closely with city staff and community stakeholders to create and implement Mesa's diversity plan. I think any city that wants to really provide good services and quality services and create a quality of life for a community needs to understand who the community is. Uh, and that means taking into account issues of equity, diversity, and inclusion. And so I think having somebody in that position really helps elevate the conversation. And hopefully we can come to a shared understanding about what that means for us as a community. And more importantly, that we value diversity, equity, and inclusion as a community. I think the city is beginning to acknowledge more and more that it has to be a systemic and an organization-wide priority uh, to work towards equity and inclusion. Uh, and I hope that collectively we see differences and the, the vast diversity of our community as an asset. Equality comes in many forms, and the pandemic showed us that there's a deep digital divide in our community. When schools closed and switched to a virtual curriculum, thousands of students in Mesa didn't have a computer or tablet to access new online classrooms. Thousands more who did have a device and didn't have a strong enough internet connection to stay connected. My own home became an elementary school for my grandkids, and when everyone was online, it was tough for my son to stay connected to his high school classes and for me to attend virtual meetings. With Mesa Cares, we were able to work with Mesa Public Schools to provide laptops and Wi-Fi hotspots to students, and internet service providers worked with customers to provide service. But the need will always be there for our residents to be connected. One long-range goal I'd like to set into motion is to have affordable and reliable internet service available to every household and business in Mesa. Whether that's a complete network of conduit to allow fiber lines, ubiquitous Wi-Fi, or a combination of both, internet service is an essential utility like water, gas, and electricity. Over the last 15 years or so, with each large construction project that requires utility work, conduit is put into place for future use. We'll continue that process and piece by piece we will add the infrastructure needed for the future. This year has been remarkable. We've been tested and the strides we've made as an organization and community in recognizing our differences and treating all people with dignity and respect is inspiring. We rose to the occasion and took these opportunities to become more transparent and connected to our community. Mesa is a great place to live, to build a business and raise a family. And it's a safe, friendly community that I'm proud to call home. You know what? I, I need to grab some food before we start this next episode. Thank goodness someone brought it up. All right, gang, let's all take an intermission. You guys know me, I'm such a foodie. Uh, tell, us about, tell us what you got. Take a picture and share it on the group. Guys, before we dig in uh, and get going on the next ep episode, it, this is a topic that's really important to me. I think you're really going to like it. It's about the, the, the future of our city, so pay attention. I'm here in the new ASU at Mesa City Center building, future home of the Sidney Poitier New American Film School and cutting-edge programs of the Herberger Institute for Design and the Arts. The facility will house academic programs related to filmmaking, digital and sensory technology, experience design, and immersive media. A lot will happen here between now and 2022 when the first students will walk through the doors. The progress here is symbolic of Mesa's commitment to education. 
building on the long history of partnership with our educational institutions. We are committed to the Achieve 60 AZ goal of 60% of Arizonans having a post-secondary credential or degree by 2030 and creating pathways for Mesa residents to achieve that goal. Last year, I announced the Mesa College Promise, a partnership with Mesa Community College, which helps high school graduates in Mesa attend MCC free of charge. I'm happy to announce the program is fully funded and will begin supporting students enrolling for fall of 2021. My sincere thanks to those of you who have invested in this program. You are supporting the future of Mesa and building the talented workforce of tomorrow. The Mesa Promise helps students go to college and get them started on that first step. We're always looking for an educated workforce, but also a diverse workforce. And so knowing that Mesa Promise basically puts all those components together for us is really kind of a no-brainer when it comes to trying to create that workforce locally. And even though we're a big company, all of our employees live here, we work here, you know, we eat here. And so it's not that we want to make a bigger company feel more local because we are local. And so um, we couldn't be happier to support the mayor in this initiative. If you or your business are interested in supporting the Mesa College Promise, please let us know. I want to share some exciting news. The Mesa City Council recently passed a resolution to create the Mesa Education Workforce Development Roundtable. This action puts education among the same priorities for our city as economic development, housing, and transportation ensuring our goals and initiative for education in Mesa live well beyond the tenure of current city leadership. We're proud to share that the members of the roundtable will include the superintendents of our school districts, college presidents, business leaders, nonprofits, and more. This group will inform, streamline, and coordinate efforts to advance Mesa's education and workforce development goals, like increasing enrollment, improving completion rates, expanding job opportunities, and building successful careers for our residents. So we have to think about not creating skills and qualifications and educating for jobs that existed yesterday or 10 years ago. Really thinking about how we use expertise, like Mayor Giles is pulling together locally here on this business and education roundtable. One thing we know is that if we don't commit resources, if we don't invest in helping those who have not really had enough voice in the past, it's impossible to reach our goals uh, in this state. So. You know, to do that, we really have to start early. We have to work together, which this roundtable, I think, really promotes. And we have to be serious about having a plan to reach our goals and investing in those goals. When talking about education in Mesa, we must acknowledge the progress on this incredible facility in the making and the ripple effect we're seeing in Mesa's downtown core. This space is where imagination can become a reality. In this enhanced immersion studio, users will create augmented realities and map virtual spaces onto physical environments. These facilities, along with the studios and the plaza at Mesa City Center, are symbolic of a new chapter for downtown Mesa, one that celebrates innovation and entrepreneurship and builds on the foundation of community and placemaking. Let me share a few highlights. Unique spaces like Cahoots Benedictine University Partnership, and Launchpad will offer opportunities for co-working and cross-sector collaboration, joining Mesa's own tech accelerator, LaunchPoint. The downtown housing market will have something for everyone, with nearly 2,000 housing units coming online in the next few years. Restaurants like Gus's Fried Chicken, K Chevrolet, and Tacos Chiwas, and Main Street Suites pave the way for new downtown dining adventures. The dynamic combination of housing, unique spaces, art, education, and great food is what I've been calling the new old downtown, where history and innovation meet to create an experience like no other. And this is just a taste of what's to come.
Economic growth in Mesa has held strong despite the pandemic. We're the 35th largest city in the nation and have the assets any business needs to thrive. We continue to gain momentum and welcome innovative industries. This area in Southeast Mesa, near Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport, is the hub for manufacturing and high-tech industry in our city. Recently, we announced this area will be home to Electromechanica's first U.S.-based manufacturing facility. The company is on the forefront of innovative, personal electric vehicles, and they will feel right at home among other cutting-edge industries. In the last year, Mesa has added jobs, welcomed new businesses, and received numerous inquiries for industries looking to call our city home. There are so many reasons why Mesa is a great place to be. From a diverse and welcoming business community to the great lifestyles for our teams and their families, we're proud to call Mesa home. I'm excited that Amazon just opened operations in our city. Mesa has great customers, an incredible workforce, and amazing community partners. Thank you, Mesa, for welcoming Amazon with open arms. We are proud to be part of the Mesa community. CMC made a great decision in 2007 to locate our state-of-the-art micro mill in Mesa, Arizona. And here we are at Union. Between us, this is our fourth project in Mesa. What really strikes me about the leadership of Mesa is just how progressive they are. We talk to them very often about who's in the market, what are they looking for, and is, is Union a good fit? They're always available. They're just awesome. Investment in our city by these businesses is about what Mesa has to offer. A combination of infrastructure, a talented workforce, and commitment to innovation and education. Mesa is a great place to live and do business. In 2020, Mesa was recognized with six awards for excellence in economic development from the International Economic Development Council. The city also received a Golden Prospector Award from the Arizona Association for Economic Development for the work on Mesa's Asian District brand. Mesa's Contemporary Arts Museum was voted Best Museum by Phoenix New Times, and the Mesa Art Center was recognized as Best Performing Art Center. The City of Mesa Parks, Recreation, and Community Facilities Department received three Best of the Best Awards from the Arizona Parks and Recreation Association. For the third year in a row, we set a record for the lowest crime rate in Mesa. And when compared to other cities that are similar in population, Mesa is one of the top three safest cities in the nation. Public safety, incredible community amenities, access to educational opportunities and economic growth are drawing new businesses and residents to Mesa. Let me share the latest in economic development news, starting at the west side and moving east. Union completed the first of four buildings at the 1.35 million square foot Class A office complex at Mesa Riverview. The Grace Properties at Southern and Alma School is prepared to welcome a blend of residential and commercial development with five acres of shops and restaurants and 10 acres of residential. Banner Health announced an expansion at Banner Desert Medical Center, including a new women's tower and state-of-the-art services for women and infants. The project totals over 200,000 square feet, opening in 2023. Mekong Plaza announced an expansion, Mekong 88, with an additional 30,000 square feet of outdoor dining and additional restaurants. PXG, a high-performance golf equipment and apparel store, opened its seventh store, a 7,000 square foot facility with golf simulators. Majestic 202 has two buildings under construction in its master-planned Class A industrial development, a 71,000 square foot building and an 87,000 square foot building. At Falcon Field, Wasatch Commercial will deliver phase one of the new Mesa hangar development this summer, and California Aeronautical University has expanded into Arizona. Falcon Field also welcomed new businesses Cunningham Aviation, Leopard Aviation, and ATP Flight School. Boeing's expansion is underway with a 155,000 square foot fabrication center. Amazon joins Apple and Google in Mesa with a new delivery station in Mesa's Falcon District. Adjacent to the Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport, Landing 3, a 525,000 square foot industrial complex, is nearly completed. CMC Steel is adding a new $300 million micro mill in Mesa. The Commercial Metals Company facility is slated to open in 2023. Dexcom, a glucose monitoring device manufacturer, has recently expanded into Landing 202 in East Mesa. With this expansion, Dexcom will employ more than 1,000 people in Mesa. 
The Electromechanica facility will employ up to 500 people and will produce up to 20,000 of the company's flagship solo vehicles each year. We're also seeing the Gateway Airport control tower take shape. This is a real symbol of transformation in Mesa. The airport has evolved from an Air Force training base to a busy commercial airport and economic driver for Southeast Mesa. We're drawing high wage jobs, high tech opportunities, and unique collaborations between industry and learning institutions. This is an exciting time to be in Mesa and to see the growth and to welcome new energy to the city while celebrating the incredible historic foundation. You got another episode for us, Mayor? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, I, I do have that. There's a project that I've been working on. Will you guys indulge me for just a second? And let me show it to you. And hey, what you got, Mayor? Well, I, I know we all agree on how cool Mesa is and all the cool stuff that's here and how we want to share it with, with people in, in the community and outside. So I've been working on, on, on a podcast, believe it or not. The name of the podcast is It's Always Cool in Mesa. Uh, could you mind if we... Let me show you a promo, and then I, would, I want you guys to all get your phones out and subscribe so we can get the subscriptions up, okay? You want to see it, just give me a holler. It's always cool in Mesa. Yes, it is. It's always cool in Mesa. Yeah. Forget the degrees and just remember this, please. I say it's always cool in Mesa. <laughs> Mayor, this is great. I got a few ideas I'd like to share. Yeah, no, I do too. too. I got hey, some. Mayor, me too. Yeah. Well, thanks, you guys. Hey, everybody, make a list of all the cool things about Mesa you want to talk about on the podcast, and uh, we'll work it into the to the script. All right. Uh, I think that's uh, all that we have for to, for tonight. Is there anybody in favor of making a motion to adjourn our meeting? So moved. Aye. 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 Looks Bye. like they get ready to wrap it up as well. All right. Hey, thanks, guys. See you at the next watch party. You know, actually, that, uh, that Lehigh show looked pretty interesting. It could be 123. Hot enough to melt your queso. But this truth I must repeat, regardless of the heat. It's always cool in Mesa. You wanna see a big suaro? Not a problem, I'll take you tomorrow. You say Venice makes you wistful. We got canals, baby, by the festival. It's always cool in Mesa. Yes, it is. It's always cool in Mesa. Yeah. July, but for 365, you know it's always cool in Mesa. If the scent of roses strikes you as awesome, get a load of these orange blossoms. If you love baseball, so does your hubby. Well, we got the A's and honey, how about them cubbies? It's always cool in Mesa. Yes, it is. It's always cool in Mesa. Yeah. The summers are hot, we seem to get that a lot, but it's Always cool in Mesa We float the river in our tubes We call summer storms haboos Every Tuesday it's tacos for a dollar Our Asian food's divine We gotta dive in lady sign I don't feel like, was that what I was supposed to do? No, it was not. <laughs> this is text. Oh. Question, why did you say this is a text? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Economic growth in Mesa has held strong. You can tell by the sound of the helicopter that's going over our picture right now. Mayor, can you fix your hair? Programs. We're not through with the uh, right? I'm saying every line a little funky. Hi. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh.
We are adjourned. <laughs> We're bringing people together to talk about this. I can't talk to your dog. Why can't? Look at the camera, Julie, okay? Did your little doo-doo when you sat down? Yeah. There you're muted. I think I could do it better if we did it again. Include Electromechanica and Mechanical. I'm sorry, what's that next one? Include Electromechanica and Mechanical. Mechanical? I said Electromechanica wrong, didn't I? Electromechanica and Mechanical. No, I'm sorry, McNano. Mac, Mac Nano. It's like a, a tiny hamburger. Electromechanica and Mechanical. Right? McNano. McNano. All right. Mac Nano. Ready?